Hi, it's Phil here, Bus Old Man Phil, with another adventure. And no, not buses today. We're, my friend Glenn here, and we'll be stepping into the picture soon. Hello, Hi. Glenn. Hi, how are you doing? Good, nice to have you here. Thank you, good uh, to this, be here. This is one of my good friends, Glenn Thompson, of St. Paul. And you remember a couple of weeks ago, I visited Neil down in Rochester, Minnesota, and that receiver that I purchased from him in that green case is going to come out of the case today. And I'd like to take you back to a field command post in World War II, about 1944, when this receiver would have been shipped overseas and set up as a command post. These receivers were also installed in the military bombers and reconnaissance planes and the transport planes. So Glenn, if you'll help me lift it out of the box, as far as we know, this is the first time it's been out of this shipping box since it was built in 1944. And it's a heavy one. Yes, they are heavy. Are you it's ready? just unimaginable that something like this now is the size of a cigarette pack. And that really is a two-man lift. This receiver weighs 50 pounds. That's why it took four engines to get a plane off the ground. <laughs> so, it has the original dust, comes with the instruction book, and the circuits, and the repair manual. It comes with a full set of tubes, and this is the cord that will connect to the rest of the unit, which consists of speech. I guess you will have to move the mic, Glenn. Maybe you can just pivot it over to this other unit here. I can do that. Tell me, let me go over this side. There. Yeah. Now can you see? Okay. Now here's the receiver tied up to a command post. Yes, I can see it. Yeah. Glenn, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the receiver. This is designed to run on 110 volts AC house power, American house power. This unit is part of four units, five if you want to count the speaker. This is the receiver. This is the microphone amplifier. Can you imagine this microphone Amplifier the size of this nowadays. Isn't that something? This unit is a PE, or I can't remember the number. Uh, oh, yeah, JB70. JB70. And this is the BC614. There may be some of you military men that recognize these numbers. This is a BC342. This unit interconnects the transmitter, the speech amplifier, and the receiver. This unit can be switched from house power or to a PE95 gen set. The PE95 was a portable field generator, generating either 220 volts or 120, 110 AC. That's how this unit works. This is the transmitter, the BC610 transmitter, and this is part of a complete command station or command post. So now we'll get back to the receiver. How many watts yeah. did that transmitter run? This transmitter into a dipole antenna or into a 100 foot long wire. Uh, what they would do to install antennas is take a slingshot and sling a 100 foot long wire into a row of trees or anything else. They could even lay it on the ground and this transmitter will tune to just about any kind of a wire connected to it for an antenna. This transmitter, when it is fully loaded into an antenna that will tune, 
will develop 300 watts AM at 100% modulation. Excuse me. <coughs> it will produce 400 watts CW or Morse code. So this transmitter came from the early broadcast transmitters. This particular one was built by Halicrafters. This began life as a 300 watt local AM radio station in the mid 30s. So if you lived in a small town and had a little daytime radio station, very likely this could have been the transmitter. Halicrafters built transmitters, Gates built transmitters this size. This transmitter in 1941 went to war. Okay, Glenn, let's get back to our receiver here. All right. So, what I want to do now is hook it up and see if it works. The first thing I want to do, probably get something and get the dust off of it. Uh, everything is somewhere else in the room. So, to get at it, we unscrew these levers. Did you have any, were you going to uh, ask me any questions? I think you had a question I wanted you to save till. Yeah, got no, the I forgot camera. what it was. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'll there think, you are. Oh, but I'll think of something as we go. Oh, okay, that's all right. Okay, you want to grab the ca the back of the cabinet? See, okay. they bind. Okay. All right. Because there's a full schematic right yes. inside there, pasted on the in oops, yeah, pasted on the inside of the cabinet. You want to show that to them and describe that to the people? Slide out cabinet, full schematic, parts list, tube list, the entire thing, circuit description. Why don't you put that on the floor down here behind us? Get it out of the way. Uh, there is dust. There's bound to be dust. Uh, everything seems to turn. Nothing is stuck. You think this has never been powered? You're not sure. I'm not sure if it's ever been powered or not. It's really hard to know. Something like that. But here's what it looks like. Inside this box is the oscillator tube. Here's the RF amp. There are two IFs in this setup. You can see the three gang tuning condenser, the detector, the first audio, second audio, and the audio out. These sets came either with a 110 volt power supply and a rectifier as this one or the BC348 came with a 24 volt dynamotor that replaced this. This power supply screws in here and this power supply could be removed and install a dynamotor circuit here and you'd have a BC348. The dynamotor was a little motor generator about that size and it ran on the 12 volt DC airplane power, or 24 volts rather, some were 36 volts. And in that was divided the six volts for the tube filaments and it generated 250 volts DC for the power. These tubes run on 250 volts DC. So that's it. So what I'm going to do now uh, is find a power cord, and you can entertain the people while I step out of the seat. <laughs> you want me to do a dance, do a song? Whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> let's see, have you got the legs for it? Uh, no. Oh, well, then I'll do the dance. No, you do the dance, yeah. Yeah, I've always uh, been amazed at the difference in technology, how things have evolved over the years, from full tubes and, and large components on these things to... The uh, miniaturization we have today, the chips, everything is that entire that entire receiver is literally on a chip the size of your thumbnail nowadays, and and just the just the advancement of technology from from those old days. 
and these things worked amazingly well. Bill's still looking for a uh, for a power cord. If I don't find it in a minute, we'll pause. Maybe we should minute. pause, yeah. Because you probably don't want to hear me rambling on and on. Yeah, well, we're going to pause the camera here. I need to rig up something. All right. Okay, I'm back. I found a cord that will plug in. So now the next thing is, uh, over here, I have a variac. This is a unit that starts out at zero volts AC. I don't know, Glenn had suggested he move the camera around, and maybe that's not a bad idea, like but you'll it. need to hold the cat microphone and the camera. So I guess we'll do that. It's so wait, easy. wait, don't move it yet. Okay. Go ahead. So whenever there's a piece of electronic equipment of any age whatsoever, we never plug it directly into the wall socket to turn it on. We always want to bring it up slowly. We want to bring the AC line voltage up very slowly so we don't blow out power, uh, 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 electrolytic condensers in the power supply. And so I plug it into this su supply here. I'm sorry, I don't. I plug it into this. Now what this is, is a safety net. In case there's a short circuit, the power comes through this and through this 300 watt light bulb. If there's a short circuit in the piece of equipment I'm testing, it will blow this light bulb. In other words, this light bulb is in series with the current. This switch will turn on this receptacle. This light tells me there's power coming in. So, I'll have this switch on, and now I'll turn this switch on, and slowly bring up the voltage. And now, let's go back and see if the receiver is on. Yes, it is. Okay, so now I've got the 40. I'm going to bring it up to 60. And we're kind of just going to let it sit there for a couple of minutes. And here's another switch here. And these switches aren't marked, so it's part of the training. That's part of the military training that you have to remember everything. So now I'm going to bring this up to about 100 volts. I should be able to see a glow from a tube filament or from the pilot light. And I don't see anything yet. At 100 volts, that pilot light should be glowing. And here's a line fuse that I can check. And we see the fuse is okay. Can you see that, Glenn? Uh, a little bit. I'm going to screw that back in. Now this switch is not marked on or off. Unfortunately, in the English language, you can't put O for off and O for on. So we put just the O for off. And there's no action yet.
Okay. The drain you want isn't drawing current. You want to pause the camera, Glenn, and let me check further here. Mm -hmm. So, we did a lot of tinkering around, which I did not want to put on the camera. Uh, the main filter capacitor in the power supply is bad, so I bridged in this one. Uh, and as you can hear, it's working. Mm -hmm. We have the receiver to pick up a short wave signal. So the project is to replace this filter capacitor. And I may just use this one, which is 20 microfarads at 500 volts. And that brought the power supply voltage up to 250, which is just right on the button, exactly where it's supposed to be. So after almost 80 years since it was manufactured, this receiver is alive. Uh, we've had it running now for about 30 minutes uh, to cook in everything, and during that time, the reception improved steadily till it seems to me like it's perfectly normal now. The antenna tuning circuit works. I'm just using an old antenna that this is just the coax from an old antenna, and this piece of coax is just laying on the roof. So the shielding of the coax is picking up the radio signal, and by the capacitive effect, it's feeding it into the, into the center. So that's going to be it for now. Glenn has to leave. He didn't tell me that I, he had a hot chick sitting in the car. So no, it's means, dinner time I'm waiting for. Oh, it's dinner time. It's food. It's all about the food. Oh, it's all about food. All right, well, leave the chick and go eat. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll do it for now. Uh, I'm going to come back and finish this video, and Glenn can come back and hold the camera. Or I may just finish it and leave him out. So that's going to come up. So I'm not posting this until I get this back together. So right. later, later. Bye, everybody. So long, Glenn. Bye. I'm putting together bits and pieces of this video clip on this BC348 receiver. I got it running last night, and then I turned it off and turned it back on. And the third time I turned it back on, it started smoking. And what happened was this... 0.01 capacitor if I get it right those of you who read these color codes will understand this this is 0.01 at 500 volts DC shorted out and burned out the 1 meg resistor or I'm sorry the 1000 ohm resistor so I have installed a new 0.01. Believe me, this wasn't easy for my old shaky hands. So I installed a new 0.01 and a new 1000 ohm resistor. So now I'm going to fire it up before I put it all back together and see if it's working. I'm back. It's the next day and I worked on this. I found a shorted capacitor, which burned up a resistor. This 1000 ohm resistor is new, and this capacitor is new. And in the process of all of that, I discovered this terminal was cracked, and when I went to move it, it pulled the wire off of the coil. So now I've soldered the coil, and this piece was off, and everything now should be working. By the way, before I forget it, if you have any interest in electronics at all, or, and or if you like military radio equipment, Mr. Carlson's Lab, that's a great website. I'm just breezing through the repair on this set, but Mr. Carlson's Lab has a BC348, which is similar to this one, 
that he's working on right now. So check out Mr. Carlson's lab. Now I'll show you the defective parts. R17. Here we go, here we go. Here's R17. 1M means a thousand, by the way. R17. This capacitor, C54, shorted to ground. And if you'll notice, this is the B plus supply to the plate of the mixer. This is also part of the crystal filter circuit. This capacitor shorted out. This is the B plus line here. This is the B plus. This is a 250 volt DC B plus line. This capacitor shorted out, grounding out the B plus line, subsequently burning out this 1000 ohm resistor. So, this capacitor is new now, and this resistor is new, and now there is voltage at this plate, and the set is working now. So uh, that's where I am now. I'm going to reconnect this tube. I'll put the cover on after I'm sure everything is working right. There's a cover that goes over this. And now, I think I explained this yesterday, but I'll go back again today. By the way, here's the shorted capacitor. And I guess I've misplaced the resistor. So, anyway, uh, what I have here is a variable voltage transformer. Whenever I'm working on an older radio, that hasn't been running for a long time, I plug it in here. And I can begin with a very low voltage and gradually turn this voltage up until I reach household voltage, which is between 110 and 120. So now I turn this on, and we see we have about 110. So I'll set this up to about 115 or so. This is the current that is drawn. This light bulb represents a fused circuit. In the event there is a short circuit in this radio or any radio, current flows from the receptacle into the radio, then it comes from this light bulb, which comes from the power supply, into this light bulb and on into the receptacle. This tells me there's power on to the receptacle. In the event of a short circuit, instead of having a big short here and burning up something, tripping the house circuit breakers, possibly damaging this variac, this bulb will take that current and light up. Uh, I can demonstrate it by creating a short circuit here. I'll short circuit the power line to the radio. You see what happens? Instead of blowing fuses or tripping circuit breakers, this bulb takes the current. Okay, now, there we are. We can hear a short wave station. So at this point now, I'm going to put the cover back on and then I'm going to tune the receiver. But I'm not going to show that to everybody because that's Mr. Carlson's lab. So pay a visit to him. He is has very good clear descriptions of what's going on, what he's doing. He uses a good microphone, his audio is clear, 
He's a good looking guy and he has a great radio shop. So that's all for now. I'm going to put this radio back together and then I'll come back. So the next thing that happened after I thought I was going to put it all back together, I let it sit overnight and today I came down and turned the receiver on and smoke arose from another spot. Well, another one of those black mica condensers shorted out on a different coil. So as you can see, I was able to squeeze in here and clip out the old capacitor, which is this one here, somewhat like the other one. And it also burned out a 1000 ohm resistor like this, which is under the chassis. So I got that changed and now I'm going to put everything back together again. This, by the way, is a 342. I heard myself say 348 uh, a little earlier. This is a BC342, not 348. So that resistor and capacitor was in this circuit here. It was, see, let me see where it is here now. Uh, here, C55, this point oh one. This one sharded out. And this is the B plus circuit. This is a 250 volt DC circuit. And this is the resistor here that took that short circuit. Oh, this is the capacitor, this one here. Not this, not this one, this one. This is the one shorted out, took out this resistor. This shorted to ground essentially dumping the whole 250 volts DC across that resistor. So that goes to the plate circuit of the first IO. So that is done and it's working again. I got the alignment done and now I'm going to try to button it up again. So uh, I wanted to also explain this gizmo a little better. I think I went over it a little too fast. Uh, and I do a circuit diagram of it, which is here. So this is what it looks like. Join the power from this variable transformer, which is this unit here. And this is the white or common line to this receptacle here. This coming from the AC goes through the light bulb. By the way, if you're testing small radios, uh, you might want to use a 60 watt. I use a 300 watt because these radios, these old radios with power transformers uh, have quite a surge and I don't want to lose power through it. So, but anyway, so that hot wire goes through the light bulb to the switch to the receptacle, just like it shows in the diagram here. And that's how you protect yourself when you're working on AC, radios, television, whatever you're working on, motors, whatever, the vacuum cleaner, whatever. So I'm going to get this radio ready to put back together. Before I put everything back together, I'll give you a glimpse at the, this is the main tuning condenser here. And these show you the first and second RF stage. The first detector. 
Then we move into the intermediate frequency stages. Then we move into the CW oscillator, which is for receiving Morse code. Then the second detector, where we convert radio signals to audio signals. And this is the first detector and the first audio. And this is the second audio, or the power output. When I was showing this, I was looking for the pilot lights to light up, and they didn't, and I'll show you why they did not. They're all crudded up with corrosion, so they weren't making contact in the socket. So now that's all done. So I guess it's time to put this back together and fire it up again. Okay, I haven't put the cabinet on it yet, but I got all the shields back in place and everything reconnected. And so I'm gonna tune around. And if you have a shortwave receiver, you'll hear this old preacher. So, this control adjusts the radio to the antenna you have connected to it. This acts as a crystal filter, which weeds out strong adjacent stations. Volume control. The CW oscillator is for Morse code, for receiving Morse code. This is the fine tuning dial. Sometimes fluorescent lights cause interference. This is the main dial. This is the band switch. This shows a frequency range. And again, here's the information. You can find these radios from time to time on eBay. This is a World War II military receiver. And once in a while they're for sale on eBay. Underneath here is a big connector with several pins for connecting this radio to other parts of equipment, like I showed you on my VC610 set in a previous video. These are the various ways you can connect speakers microphones, and a Morse code keyer. <laughs> These are fuses for the dynamotor or the power supply. In this case, it's a power supply, AC. This is for the dial lights. And this is another way to connect an antenna. This is a ground terminal here. You push in and you can connect a wire. So that's about it. Uh, it's time for me now to hop on a boxcar and ride out of town up to Ham Lake, Minnesota, where Sean Himmelberger has an MC9, and I'm going to go up there and check that engine out with him and uh, see what he has in mind. So uh, I think I hear my train coming. I hope he stops for me. If he doesn't stop, I'll have to walk. See you later.
Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to change socks before I go. Something went haywire here. Yeah, this whole sock thing confuses me. I don't know. Maybe Cookie here can help me. What What's wrong with it? I keep getting confused over the socks. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I can't seem to find the right yeah, socks. Those... <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. What's happening? <laughs> Crazy now. Look at that. Look at that. Crazy, man. Well, can you find me some socks that match? I don't know. Where can I find that? I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just don't know what to do. <laughs> Look at that. Put the picture so your boss and buddy can find your sock. Oh, uh, three. Anybody out there know what I'm. <laughs> what? How to solve this Black. problem. <laughs> Black and There's the Maggie. Say, hey, Maggie. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Well, I got to get going here. Well, I missed my, or I should say, the train missed me. No boxcars on that train, so I decided not to ride. I'm going to find my own way to get up there to Sean Himmelberger's. Uh, and this is where I'm going, this is what you need to see. Look at his YouTube channel, Himmelberger Bus. Got it? Yes. Okay, Himmelberger bus. So, uh, I'm going to take this along. I don't know. I may have to entertain him. He might want me to sing him a song. So, I guess I better get ready to go. Uh, and I'll see you around. Right if you get working, <laughs> hang by your thumbs. Ta-ta. Okay, click that little red camera now and that will stop it. Where That's is it? the little red camera, Cookie. This one, this one? See the little red camera? This one down, okay. down. Okay, bring it, bring it to me. Bring it to me. I can always leave this part out. The little red camera. See the little red camera? Oh, okay, okay.